This is Rod Jones for One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism.net and Edify in the Body Ministries. And this is our endeavor to do just that, edify the members of his body. What we're looking at today, we're looking at the second part of how to observe the Lord's table, or some people will call it the Lord's Supper. Some people call it communion. Um, different different things. But how, how to properly observe the Lord's table and how we are to remember the Lord's death till he come. Because I think that's that's the biggest issue there, is remembering the Lord's death till he come. Uh, most oftentimes, people don't even take that into account there. Um, but that's what that's what we are we are um, exhorted to do. Um, remember his death till he come. And, and it's, it's oftentimes when most people, um, I'm not saying that they don't take a look and they don't see the verses that say that, but they do it in their own way, because nowhere does it tell you exactly about the elements themselves. And we see the Lord took the cup, and we know the, the wine that they were actually partaking of, and we know the bread. But what type is it? Do we do unleavened bread? Where do we buy it from? Do we, do we get it from just any store? Um, and, if, and if so, how much of it are we to partake of? Um, and how often should we do as the apostles? The apostles shared one piece or and uh, one whole cup they shared. And, and, and again, what is the element, elements of the cup there? But see, that right there is doing it from a carnal mind and a carnal way of doing things. And, and that's the whole purpose of the study here, which is tied along with the carnal-minded Christian and the spiritual-minded Christian study. Because most oftentimes, those that do observe it in a, whether it's a meal, when they say, well, we're coming to, to, to show victory of the Lord, or if they're doing it with wafer and wine, and they say, well, what we're doing, we're doing this in observance, uh, or if they do it uh, by way of another way, uh, they have other ways of doing it, or some would not do it at all. But see, you're looking upon that in a sense of, carnal minded thinking when we do that um, and that's not what the Lord wanted to convey to his apostles whatsoever what the Lord was conveying to his apostles were that that cup signified as he said this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you and matter of fact what we're gonna do let's let's move on let's take a look at the verses at hand let's take a look at the verses at hand and then we're going to move on. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And let's take a look at the verse in hand. Verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Now as you see here, uh, Paul is saying, For I received the Lord, in verse 23, that which I also delivered unto you. And we looked at that and uh, when you look at the New Testament study that was prior to this study, you'll see that's the issue of what he's saying is he received the ministry. The, the, the ministry, what he received, it's not that he received how they ought to eat and drink properly. That's not what that's talking about. And, and the, uh, or, or how they should uh, partake of the cup for real this time or not eat all the food up from people. That's not what's being said there. But folks, oftentimes, that's the way um, it's perceived. That's the way it's perceived that, um, that Paul is coming along telling the Corinthians that, hey, look, you guys are, are partaking the way you ought to partake. You guys, you guys ought to be doing things a little bit different. You, you, you know, you guys ought to share. Man, wait on the others. You know, you're, you're taking up too much of the food. Paul could care less about their dietary issues there. He's not worrying about the issue of whether he, they're hungering. 
Paul himself wrote to them that he himself hungered. He says, even, even unto this present hour, we both hunger and are thirst and, and thirst and, and are buffeted, having no certain dwelling place. So would it would it uh, make a difference if the other saints were sacrificed? I'm, I'm not saying that he doesn't care that they weren't having the same care for one another, because he did. But he did that when he told them they weren't acting as that one bread, that one body. That's the whole purpose of the cup issue there. They weren't acting of uh, at the same care that's why he told him in the next over in in, in uh, romans 12 the next chapter over that they ought to have the same care for one another they ought to they ought to value and esteem others more than themselves but uh, paul's emphasis here was not the idea that they weren't eaten properly there was divisions the among the body of christ and, and and we looked at other verses in the, in the last study about how the apostles themselves had divisions among them. There was strife among the apostles. Right at the same time, the Lord has given them the ministry. He's going to want to give them the cup to partake of. And he, he played it, uh, prayed that they be as one, even as uh, I am my father as one, he said. And he prayed unto the father that, 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 that they be, be one. And that's being one members of his body and be as one bread. And he gave an example about the foot washing thing. And he said, this example I give unto you that ye do that unto each other. But let's read on, let's come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, chapter one, and, and let's get into the heart of the issue here. 1 Corinthians chapter one, let's take a look at verse nine. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the household of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Uh, now, when you see that there, um, it says, who called you unto the fellowship of his son, in other words, that, that fellowship, that togetherness, that, that they ought to be as one. And that's his hope there, that these Corinthians would be as one in Christ. And, and this is the same goal. But instead of that, he says in verse 10, that there be no divisions among. He heard in verse 13, 11, I mean, he heard there was divisions and can, there was contentions among them. And he heard that they were not together. They did not have the same fellowship. His, his his prayer and he was hoping that they would that there be no divisions among them that they be joined together perfectly not just joined together but perfectly joined together in the same mind in the same judgment and that's what he that's what he seemed to be the case there he opens up the whole epistle with this issue with that being the issue there and and again it had nothing to do with them not eating eating food properly or taking all the food from the ones that just didn't get there in time. And we're gonna, we're gonna go over these issues here and um, we're gonna to get to the heart of the heart of the matter of, of the uh, whole bread and cup issue here. And, um, and why I think it's essential um, that it's called the, that rather should be called the, uh, the Lord's table. And that's because you're gonna have, you're, you have a cup and there's the, and the, and the bread consists on the table there. But, Let's read on here. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And let's read on here. Uh, look at verse 16. But if any man seemed to be contentious. Now remember there were, we seen that in the, in the uh, uh, chapter 1. We have no, no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise ye not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. See, it was intended that they did come together for the better. For, if, for first of all, when you come together in the church, notice when you come together in the church, this is not come together to eat. Keep that in the back of your mind because we're going to look at some verses when Paul says, therefore, when you come, when you come together to eat, and he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna say that there about uh, the difference between coming together in the church or 
as in verse 33 is going to say, wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry for one another. But dock at that in the back of your mind here. And when you come together um, in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. Notice they're still, they're, uh, they're together, but they're, they have a divided mind. They're not of the same mind. They have a divided mouth. They're not speaking the same thing, but they are together, but they're divided. And I partly believe it, for there must also be heresies <clears throat> among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Now, we see this plain as day. Most people say, well, no, what, what he's saying is, you're supposed to come together for the better, and it's supposed to be to eat the Lord's Supper, but they're not coming together to eat the Lord's Supper. They're coming together for the worse. That's not what's being said here, folks. Not at all. Paul is saying that they ought to come together for the better, and there ought to be no divisions among them. They ought to speak the same thing with the same mouth. And Paul says, therefore, when you come together, in one place that's one when they come together in one place that's the church here this is not to eat the lord's supper and you know i i don't, I don't care what it, most anybody would say about well no that is uh paul talking about that they they should come together and eat the lord's supper properly um Again, as I said before, Paul could care less about the uh, how they partook, how they um, ate a physical element of their food, of their dinner. If that would be the case, why didn't he tell the Galatians about it, the uh, other saints about it? Yeah, the Corinthians were the only ones that weren't partaking of the Lord's table correctly, the Lord's Supper correctly. No, it's the issue is they were they were the ones that weren't taking of the Lord's table correctly. They were drinking of the cup unworthily, they, which is the ministry, which is the New Testament. And as you see, as it says there, take, eat. It, it, it talked about the bread. This is my body. And it talks about the cup. Drink of the cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. The Lord had a cup. And we see that in the garden, the Lord had a cup. And the Lord told the apostles, he told the apostles' mother, he said, are, are you able to drink the cup that I'm able to drink of? Or then when he told Peter, he says, uh, uh, what, the cup my father give me, shall I not drink it? He didn't have a cup that he had, he just had around all the time. And he, he drinks of that one cup. It, that's a, it's spiritual. It's the ministry what he was going to partake of, and what we ought to partake of as well. Let's read on here. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's take a look at verse 15. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of of the body of Christ, for we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Now, Paul says, I speak to as wise men, judge you what I say. What he's going to come and tell you here is that um, he wants you to not immaturity or carnal minded maturity uh, thinking, but spiritual minded maturity judge what he's saying and he's saying the cup of blessing which we bless he's talking about a view of what the of what the idol worshiping people do when they do idol worship because he's going to come along and say that later on about about how they uh, partake of the the, how to, uh, the idol uh worshiping food and such and that's going to be later on uh in the issue there but he says the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of christ the togetherness of the or fellowship of the blood of Christ. And what's the blood of Christ? That's the, the New Testament, what was shed. That's what he's talking about here. That cup of blessing which we bless, is it not? It ought to be. 
it ought to be our fellowship of what the blood of Christ said it is. And that's that's uh, um, the New Testament in my blood, the Lord said. That fellowship we ought to have in the blood of Christ. The What the blood of Christ accomplished, it brought forth that New Testament. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? In other words, the bread which we break. You notice in verse 17 it says, For we are all partakers of that one bread. That's the bread that he's talking about. The bread which we break. That's the You break bread, you're getting ready to, 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 to partake of it, aren't you? That's what he's talking about here. Is it not the communion, in other words, the fellowship of the body of Christ? That's us. This is giving you a, 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 a definition here of what the bread and cup is consist of folks it is the new testament in, which is in his blood which the ministry that we partake of we have fellowship in that's what we ought to bless that that's our cup and the communion of the body of christ is the bread which we break verse 17 for we being many are one bread and our and one body for we are all partakers of that one bread and if you, when you see, he says that one bread and the cup of blessing, which we bless when he later on, later on shows um, uh, 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 whoever so dr drink of this cup unworthily or uh, eat of this bread. That's talking about the bread, that bread, which is ourselves partaking of each other in love, the way we're, we uh, we're taught. How we have to have care for one another and fellowship and, and value and esteem each other in, in brotherly love and, and, and so on as Romans chapter 12 talks about. And, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about as well. We, we're going to take a look at the verse uh, in a second there. But that, that cup issue, we, we looked at that when we looked at the New Testament there. And you don't want to drink of that cup unworthily. Which means, which is how the Corinthians were partaking and drinking of that cup unworthily. Now we're going to look more into the bread issue for a second here. But come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's take a look at the bread issue. Look at verse 12. For as uh, <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, uh, uh, chapter uh, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 12. Verse 16. Well, I'm sorry, verse 12. <laughs> For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body. Now, you can see what this is talking about. For it's talking about our body. Our bodies itself. Now, look at what it says here. Actually, well, it's, he's using a comparison to show a body concept versus us as the members of the body uh, and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ and he's he's talking about now Christ's body he's using the comparison to a body structure to Christ's body now let's look at verse 13 for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free we have been all made to drink into one spirit for the body is not one member but many see that's the whole purpose of going into the study of the spirit and our understanding about that and about the whole issue about uh, the lord's uh table and the new testament because they all are tied into one and you see that here you see you've seen that throughout uh, what we've been studying there and, and but you're told that we're all made to drink into one spirit and what is that spirit we, we we looked in we looked at the issue that's the living word of the living god you've all been we've all have fellowship into that that's the new testament the the, the new testament of his word is writ it's the holy ghost ministry it, uh uh rev brought forth revelation onto onto man onto the man at that time to write it down write it down and that which is the New Testament in the Lord's blood. For the body is not one member, but many. And as you see here, that it's talking about that one body and that one 
bread issue. And we're going to look at more verses that, that, that show that, folks. Um, and, and we're going to see about the body concept there and about how it's founded upon love. The New Testament itself founded upon love. And we, we, we showed that in the last study and the, prior, the three prior studies on the New Testament about the love foundation of the New Testament. And that one bread that the Lord said, the Lord broke the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body. The bread and, and body concept is not new. It's not something new to this dispensation of Gentile grace that we live in. But the bread, the bread and body concept was also given as doctrine unto Israel. The Lord gave it unto Israel to, 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 um, to bring forth and, and to learn that they be as one and that they love one another. And we looked at that over there in John over 50 something times. It, it, it's taught to the apostles that they love one another and the Lord himself prayed that they love one another. That they operate upon and partook of each other and appreciated the fact that there's not one that's going to reign over or be counted chief over over the other but that they serve each other and and and, and as he used the example wash each other's feet and it's not just about wash each other's feet but it's about that they have the same care for each other and let's take a look at this over here how we are told that we are to partake of one another as members of one body. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at verse 24. And he's again emphasizing upon the body there. For our commonly parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the, that the members should have the same care for one another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or whether one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now you see there, it, it talks about that body. And we ourselves, uh, uh, we looked at that issue earlier. When we looked at the, uh, the, the love concept there. Um, but there should be no schism in the body. And that's the vision there. Or that's one member going its own way, so to speak. Um, that we should have the same care for one another and one member suffer all the members suffer with it and you see the the love there you see the same that um uh, uh that 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 fellowship that there ought to be verse 24 says that our commonly parts have no need but god hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked that's the goal there and we ought to have that same viewpoint about our um parts so to speak if you want to uh, look at it in that sense there but our parts also ought to have no schism in our body and that's the whole issue of we ourselves look upon our body and we know that if our pinky is just important to us as our uh, foot is and if the one member suffers all members going to suffer with it Someone slams their finger in the door, the whole body's going to get up and jump around. Mouth's going to say something. Eyes are going to look a certain way, and so on and so on. And we're going to we're going to we're, we're going to take care of that part. If we have a a broken finger, for instance, and it's the, the other hand, and everything's going to take up the slack for what that lacks. And, and and we and we know that our mind is going to make sure, and our eyes are going to make sure we don't push hit our hand into something there. Yeah, you get the picture there. But that's how God would have us to be as one body. That's how we partake of each other in love. That's just an example there. Um, but again, the bread issue is a spiritual issue. The cup, a spiritual issue. And let's take a look at another issue that Paul gives on to us before he introduces, not introduces the New Testament or anything like that, but before we get to Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he's going to talk about Israel. And he's going to look upon how they did, how they did not um, partake, how they uh, ate and drank unworthily. Now let's, let's take a look at that there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let's look at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant 
how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all did eat the same spiritual meat and all did drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ and when you see this here he, Paul says he would not have us ignorant of this he would not have us ignorant of Israel's sanctification um, how they misused their sanctification now if I ask anyone and I say well what does 1 Corinthians 10 talks about everyone will say it's a sanctification issue and you see that it says and they were all baptized in the sea now were they baptized into the sea this is not talking about water baptism but this is a this is of a spiritual issue and and, and the whole idea of baptism here that's a sanctification issue where they they it, it, it's a trusting you, you you they they went they, they didn't balk they went through the sea based upon what what they trusted in there and look at verse 3 and did all eat the same spiritual meat notice it tells you it's spiritual meat and all did drink the same spiritual drink for they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ now we ourselves, and, and, and he's told that uh, we're all we're, we're made to drink into one spirit. Do you see the application here? They drink the same spiritual drink, and they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. At that time, they drank of Christ. <laughs> they drank of Christ there. Now, when you look at that there, what they did... It was about faith. They placed their, they were, they, 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 they partook of Christ. They partook of that rock, which was Christ. That's what the verse says. I don't care how people, people would, would say what they say. Well, most people would talk about the issue of justific Israel's justification. You know, say, well, Israel wasn't justified back then because Christ's death wasn't, Christ's blood wasn't shed. They back then knew about a Redeemer. They trusted in the name. And Jesus Christ himself, and we, we, we can look at it later on, we're going to look at about those five mandates of Christ, who he is going to be for Israel. And they, and, and Scripture prophesies about that. They understood who Psalms was talking about, the Psalms was speaking of, that the Messiah would die. And, and, and that's a whole separate issue that we're going to get into. Uh, at a later date there, but when you see the issue and my point in bringing this up is the whole issue that they were uh, That it was a spiritual drink and a spiritual meat and Sure, they did they did eat manna. We know that was a physical coming down from heaven, but they trusted what was being said and They drank of that spiritual rock they, which was Christ It was spiritual not, not a physical carnal, but let's just read on. Come over here to John chapter 18. John chapter 18, and let's take a look at something about the cup. Is it a physical or is it a, is it a spiritual? Look at, uh, look, look at John 18 verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? No, I ask you. The cup that his father hath noticed, given me, given him. Shall he not drink it? Is that a physical cup? No, that's the ministry. That is what the Lord has to do. That is what the Lord has to do and, and what uh, what is given unto him to accomplish. That is what is put into his trust. That is what he ought not do. That's why he said, the cup which my father has given me, shall I not partake of it? Shall I not drink it? The Lord is going to fulfill his ministry. He's going to fully fill what the, what the father put into his hands. All that power given unto him. He's not going to, he says, okay, you're going to defend me, but should I not partake of what the Lord given me to be? Is that what you're asking me to do? The Lord has something for me to do in the same way with the Corinthians. The Corinthians, when it, when it talks about the Corinthians uh, eating 
and drinking of the cup of the Lord unworthily, that would be them not partaking or, or them taking that cup and not drinking it. They're not partaking of that cup. And that's what, that's what Paul says, as oft as, oft as ye drink it. That he's, there's not going to be a, um, uh, he's not talking about whenever the pastor comes along and says, hey, when, let's do it uh, once a month or let's do it every other week. That's as oft as ye drink it. That's as often, not as oft as the pastor says. This is every day, all day, folks, is what this is talking about here. The Corinthians, Paul wanted the Corinthians understanding to be that they are, they are to drink of it every day, all day. And drinking of it unworthily would be to uh, partake of it every three months or partake of it once a month or at the end of the month or even on the first day of the, every week would be on drinking of it unworthily. But we today like to say that um, we're smarter than, than, than God's word. And, and many times, again, me, me teaching this subject here, um, it'll be maligned where ones will say, oh, well, he's just, you, you're, just, you're just making too much out of it. You're throwing things, all these things against the wall, hoping something sticks. You got the verses, folks. You got the verses right here. And also, you can take a take a look at the ones who did studies on the issue. They 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 go and they look at this verse here. They look at First Corinthians chapter eleven. Go back to Luke chapter twenty two, and they look at the, the the idea when they were on the table there. That's it. Paul tells you that in the night the Lord was betrayed, they miss everything that the Lord taught. They don't look at the whole issue about that cup is the New Testament in my blood. How are you going to explain when you partake of a fellowship meal that that's the New Testament being spoken of or that, it, that we are to um, administer or drink properly of? Or how can, you, how can you come along and say, how can I drink unworthily? Well, I think I'm drinking unworthily is not letting everyone have any drink. Or something the verse we have to allow God's Word to say exactly what it says it's a spiritual issue only there's no carnal physical element that you are to partake of and if you do you are drinking of the Lord's cup unworthily matter of fact you're not even remembering the Lord's death till he come the Lord said do this in remembrance of me and what you do in remembrance of him is you partake of that ministry you do what Paul is asking these Corinthians to do. Paul says, be ye followers together of me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he starts off that. Be ye partakers of me. Don't be as the as, as, as uh, chapter 10, the uh, Israel was. Israel was tempted of this world. And, and they fall, they rather would follow after this world and, and, and be as this world instead of following the Father, the Lord. But let's read on. Come over to Mark 10. Mark chapter 10. Let's look at verse 37. Mark 10, verse 37. And they said unto him, this is uh, the, the two apostles there, talking unto the Lord, grant us that we may sit on one on the right hand and the other on thy left in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Hmm, what? The Lord baptized? Huh? And then, and they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with, shall ye be baptized. Now you see that there. There was a cup that they wanted to drink of, I mean, that he's told them that they're able to drink of. But they wanted they wanted the honor to sit on the right hand and the left of the Lord. And, and the Lord said, you know now what you ask. And he asked them, can you drink of the cup that I drink, that I drink, that I drink of? That's the same one. He's not talking about at when they get to the table. And when he says, and be baptized with the baptized, baptism that I'm baptized with, he's not talking about when he was baptized by John. That happened a long time ago. And he said, and they said, we can. They knew exactly what the Lord was talking about. 
And he said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I that I drink of. He said, notice what he says, that I drink of. The Lord drinks of a cup. You've seen the Lord drinks of a cup there. And with the baptism that I am baptized with, shall ye be baptized. The baptism that the Lord was was baptized with at that time and the cup that the Lord drank of at that time, they didn't drink of it yet. They didn't partake of it yet. Remember what the Lord said. He said, the comforter, the spirit of truth, which is the comforter, comforter shall guide you in all things. Did they drink of the cup that the Lord drank of? Well, sure they did. The Lord said that they would, and they did. We have, we have scripture that shows the apostles going out bearing much fruit. That fruit that they bared was going to be what was going to be taking place in the cup that was to be partook of, that the Lord was going to drink of. As the Lord said, in that day, those are those, the, 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 the people, the fruit that they were going to bear when they spoke the New Testament out of, out of their mouths. That, and that baptism that the Lord said that he is baptized with, that's that's being placed into something. That's that's the the um, the uh, um, the, pos the positional application there of 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 um, of the idea of when they said sit that we may be able to sit. That's that that's a throne. That's that's the idea of of what they are uh, a, a placement into. And when you look at the idea of of a baptism there, you can have a uh, spiritual baptism. You can also have a exaltation or a vocational baptism, which we are going to be partakers of. But let, let's read on there. But the whole idea, uh, Matthew twenty-two, Matthew twenty-six. The whole idea was we're looking at the whole idea of the uh, spiritual application of it. The cup that the Lord had was, and the cup that they drank of was the same one that was the ministry that was spoken of there, the New Testament. Matthew 26, let's look at verse uh, 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Now, is this the same cup the Lord had, or is this is this a different cup? Well, you know this is not a, the physical, what he's, what he's talking about. Um, this cup, they, remember when they said we laid ready, we made ready? It ain't like they said, oh, hey, Lord, we need you to use your cup. And they're using the Lord's cup there. No, the cup, it is the physical cup he's he's talking about. But when he says drink ye all of it, they knew the spiritual application of it was the ministry. Notice what's being said here. For this is the blood of the New Testament. This is the blood of the New Testament. Notice the Lord's blood wasn't shed yet. This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the wine of the vine until the day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom now notice it says for this blood this is my blood my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins and then he says drink ye all of it and then they're going to bring forth that fruit in that day, at that time, in the in the uh, uh, when the Lord Kingdom comes. You know, I, I hope this is all coming together. For you know, we we can see what's being spoken of there, that that cup signified to them. They knew exactly what the Lord meant when the Lord had that cup there for them to partake of. Also, Paul knew exactly what the Lord was saying. As well as the Corinthians even knew. They knew they were drinking of the cup unworthily. We today, when we meet with someone, we'll say, well, well I was sitting around with the brethren, uh, we were just breaking bread. That means you were having fellowship. You, 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 were, you, were, you, were, you were saying something. You, something. you were getting together. And we're going to look at those applications later on. But, and even with the, with the cup. Or we look at it, today we say we use the terminology of a plate. We'll say, boy, man, I got a lot on my plate. You, and you're not walking around with a physical plate. Your application is a 
not a physical, but of a non-material. When you say you have a lot on your plate, that means you have a lot going on. You to partake of. We even use that application today. Let's take a look at something else. Let's look at the whole issue about the, the temptation issue that the Lord spoke about. Because this, this is going to come into play for those that are not war, um, drinking of the, um, partaking of the, of, of the cup um, the way they ought to. Or drinking unworthily or eating unworthily uh, and not discerning the Lord's body. But let's take a look at the issues here. Come to Luke chapter 22. Let's look at verse 40. And you're going to see how all this comes into play here and what it has to do with us. This is the temptations of the, this world and the watching for the enemy. The watching for the enemy is what we're going to be looking at at this time here. Uh, and when he was at the place, this is the Lord, he said unto them, pray that he enter not into temptation. Remember we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 when they were tempted of the Lord? I mean... They were tempted in the wilderness. This pray that ye enter not into temptation. He's telling these apostles that. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now, look at what, what the Lord says here. He told the apostles, pray that ye enter not into temptation. See, that temptation was going to come. That temptation was going to be for the world. He's going to tell them about watching. Now, notice, just keep that docketed in your mind there about that temptation there. And it says, Father, the Lord says, Father, if thou be willing. But he knows it's the Father's will. It's not about his will. The Lord knew this. He said how, much, how many times he's going to have to go, go and suffer. Remove this cup from me. What cup? The Lord had a cup. He was actually a physical cup that he, that he was looking at. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Notice what the cup is, folks. It's the Lord's, it's the Father's will. That's why he says, not my will, but thine. In other words, that cup that the Lord had was, was concerning the will of the Father there. That's what, it, that's what the cup was. It was the Father's will that he was partaking of. And you know what? When we part the cup that Paul tells us to partake of, it's also the Father's will. And when we do that, we do that in remembrance of the Lord. So how often do you want to do that in remembrance of the Lord? Partake of the Father's will. Do you want to do it once a month? Every other month? Once every three months? Every six months or wherever? Whenever the pastor tells you, eh, I think we'll have the Lord's um, Supper today, or the Lord, they'll even call it the Lord's Table. But they'll do it in element. They'll do it in a physical element to partake, and all these other things. But let's read on. Come over to Luke 22, verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony. And notice he was in agony. And it's fascinating to understand that. Um, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he had rose up from prayer, he was come to his disciples. He found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Now, he, this is the second time he told them that. But you notice, the Lord was in agony. He prayed more earnestly. That He, he saw the... the the um, what was in the cup for him to partake of. He, he was getting ready to fulfill his will, the Lord's, the Father's will, which is now his will, what, what his cup consists of. He was getting ready to go to the cross and be a curse for us. There was going to be three hours of darkness all over the whole world where the Lord was getting ready to go to battle with the adversary there. But that's a whole separate issue that we can cover at another time. But you see what it says here in verse 46. Why sleep ye, rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. He's explaining to them about their being watching, watching for the enemy. And whether 
and we're going to see who their enemy was and about the temptation that's being spoken of there and why he came to the to them three different times there's a reason why he came to them three times and says could you not watch he told them three different times could you not watch and he's wake us uh, why sleep ye lest you enter in temptation and they were to watch so they wouldn't enter temptation and what was that about well we're going to get to that come over to psalms 23. so let's look at psalms 23 and in psalms 23 we're going to look at uh, a very popular psalm that many people always uh, uh, refer to but they don't understand the gist of what's being spoken of there but let's take a look at that psalms 23 let's look at verse 1. the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in the green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, com they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house forever. Now this is a very popular uh, uh, prayer amongst many people who say they're Christians and uh, they, 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 they apply this to their life for themselves there but what you see here verse 1 the Lord is my shepherd in other words the Lord is going to guide the Lord ought to guide this saint here I shall not want there should not be a want it ought to be a necessity he maketh me to lie down the green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul his word restoreth the, the soul of the of, of the saint notice this is talking about sanctification only here he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake when you look at the proverbs the proverbs talk about following the right paths now how that happens the knowledge of the father the knowledge of his will being instructed in all wisdom leads us to the paths of righteousness for his namesake for the lord's namesake we, when you when you follow the right paths and not the way of the wicked or the evil man that's what this is talking about here yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me you notice when it was talked about that the lord said about the comforter is going to come and guide them and this is the leading you see here and it's the same concept of what the lord taught the apostles there thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over you remember when the lord was at the table and the lord says behold the hand that betrayeth me is with me on the table you notice that the when peter said about lord not my feet only but my head on my head also uh my cup my cup runneth over that's the, the cup is what he's 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 all what the all what he has is contained in his cup so much that it's running over surely goodness and this is the one the saint that is going to partake of the father's wisdom and knowledge and will and follow the right path not the path of the evil man or the path of this world with the strange woman surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever now oftentimes when someone uh listens to what i just said they're going to say oh man he's just tying too much in into into each other he's just drawing application for that and tying it into what that is right there but folks when you have when you have uh scriptures to 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 do what we're taught to compare spiritual with spiritual when you're told to take verses and you when you use the verses the way we ought to use the verses you're going to not just hinge upon one verse as many do that observe the lord's supper they have one verse but they have two verses to use the lord said take eat this in my body which is broken for, for, for me take this and he took the bread and they took the cup and they drank it that's all they use they don't they do not use anything else about the whole issue in, in why they partake some might say oh well they go and they show oh we'll go to ephesians and we show how we ought to um, this is a show to the angel and angels, but what they don't look upon is in order to make a show to the angels, you have to do 
what Ephesians chapter 3, 10 talks about in 11, that to the intent that now onto the principalities and powers uh, might be made the manifold wisdom of God to the church. I'm just paraphrasing that. How we make the how we make the manifold wisdom of God known, folks, by sitting around a table eating? Do we a fellowship meal is going to make the manifold wisdom of God known to the angelic realm? Think about what you do and what you say. No, it's the words that come out of our mouth that makes the manifold wisdom of God known by us, the church, not partaking unworthily, but by taking that cup and bringing forth the New Testament. Not just wasting time sitting around having a fellowship meal when you can be out there teaching the word. When, when ones can be getting edified, the New Testament can be brought forth as we are supposed to be ministers of the New Testament. And actually able ministers. But let's, let's, take a, let's look at uh, uh, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And as we looked at, we looked at the issue there about the... Uh, uh, the the psalm the psalmist there talking about my cup runneth over behold the hand of the uh, be, uh, he talks about the enemy is with me on the table and such and look at this here to verse twenty four we look at this let's look at it again now now we have a different light to look at it and there was and there was strife among them which of them should be accounted as the greatest and he said unto them the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. And notice there was strife. He's, he's going to say, don't be like that. Don't be like them. Hey, the Gentiles, he, when they start acting like they're, they're strife amongst them and who's going to be the greatest, he compared them to the kings of the Gentiles. And, 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 that, and that's sad. But ye shall not be so. And he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, or another who seems to be chief or, or, or greater, as, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is it not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. And ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Notice that there? How the Lord gave an example about how they ought to have care for one another. And how they ought not to act like who like someone has leadership over the other, but they act as serving each other. The Lord's given example that he's serving even though he's greater. Notice what he said. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And the Lord said, Ye are they which continue with me in my temptations, because the Lord also was tempted. He was tempted of the devil. And he's explaining to these apostles that. Look at what you're doing. You guys are being tempted by this world. You're, you're acting like the Gentiles of this world. You're being tempted of their ways. You're, you're, you're not acting as though you ought to. You need to watch and, and take heed, therefore. And I want you, those words are the same words Paul uses with us when he says, watch ye or take heed. And it, it's to tell you about the temptation that you be not tempted. Don't act like this world does. You can't be partakers of the table of devils and the table of the Lord. But let's read on. Come over to John 15. John 15. Let's look at verse 18. John 15, verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated you before it hate it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. And see, of course, they're for the world. They're, they're, they're flesh and blood. But the Lord says they're not because the Lord chose them out of the world. They got a new calling. They're going to drink of a particular cup and be of the Lord's body. But let's, let's see this here. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And we just looked at that. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Notice that all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. They're going to be persecuted for the Lord because the world hates them. And the Lord told them that. 
that they hate the Lord first, because they hate the Lord, they're going to hate them also. They're going to hate them because they're not of this world. We today, folks, are taught by Paul that we are to renew our mind and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We're, we're going to be hated as well. You're told, yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Do you see the similarity there? But we ought not to be tempted as well. We ought to watch. We ought to take heed, therefore. And folks, partaking of the New Testament, the Lord's cup or the Lord's table is understanding what the Lord taught the night he was betrayed unto the apostles there. And what Paul is teaching us is what Paul received of the Lord. It's part of the New Testament there. It's part of our cup that we all have a cup to partake of as well. And we are to partake of that cup and not drink the cup of the Lord unworthily or drink or eat of the bread of the Lord unworthily either. We're to partake of each other. Let's look at it. Come over to John 15, 22. John 15, verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man done did, they had not sin. But now they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this come to pass that the word might be fulfilled as it is, is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. And that goes over here. That Lord is saying something from Psalm 69. That they hated me without a cause more than the hairs of mine head, which they which would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which uh, I took not away. Notice they hated me without a cause. And the Lord is, the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying there that they hated the Lord without a cause. That's this world. And he's telling his apostles as well that they're going to hate them too. He, 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 this is doctrine that's given that the apostles are going to know that they're going to be hated for the Lord's namesake. And folks, you are too. When you preach his word, strictly what his word says, you are going to be persecuted and hated. I myself, when I'm teaching that it is of a spiritual aspect, the cup and bread issue only, that it is not about physical elements, I am also being maligned and saying, well, you, you're, uh, you're, you're teaching a heresy. You know why? Because it doesn't cater to someone that taught this to them. Maybe they, they're taken from what some Grand Society said or some Great School of the Bible said or some Catholic Lutheran or Baptist or Methodist thing situation that taught this issue. And because they didn't teach the issue or some of a better stature um, who they think they might they look up to and um, that they would rather trust in that man than trust in what God's word says. And, and, and again, and I, I said before, you can leave comments. Um, also, you can email me or you can you can get a hold of me uh, either way. And we, we can discuss the issues here. But this is not of an element. And if, we, if you're doing something similar to what the denominational church world is doing, they take up a wafer, they take a wine up, and they partake of it. If you're doing something in any way similar, you're not doing according to the word, of the way the Lord would have you to do it. You're doing it according to the world, the course of this world. And let's just, let's move on here. Let's move on here. Come over to John 17. Uh, I have given them thy word, and the, word, the world hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Notice he says here, 
the world hated them. And, and, and I give them thy word. Notice, he's giving them the, the, the word of the Lord. And he says, keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am now the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. And he gives you an example of what the, the truth is that the sanctification is going to be from. It's going to be from God's word. Thy word is truth. And when he sends them out, they're going to be taking his word. That's what's going to sanctify their souls. That's what's going to guide them. That spirit of truth there. And that's what they're going to see. They're, they're going to see the uh, the spirit of truth being uh, which is going to be used to guide them. You know, but what you see here take place is you're seeing the Lord talking about his apostles taking the comforter, the word of truth, which is going to guide them in all things. Also, the Lord told the apostles that he, the, this, the, the, the comforter, the Holy Ghost, is going to bring to the remembrance of all things whatever the Lord has taught them. And we ourselves, when we take the spirit, we ourselves are, are brought into remembrance of, of things, all the things that we are taught. And that's how you are to bring in remembrance the Lord's death till he come. That's all things. How can, how can we say that we're just going to, uh, a fellowship meal can, can, can actually bring forth the remembrance of the Lord or do the Lord justice of what he's asking us to do? We have to think about what we do. And what we say here, come over to Mark, uh, Mark 14. Mark 14, let's take a look at another issue here. Mark 14, let's look at verse 30, 32. And they came to the place which is named Gethsemane, Gethsemane. And he said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I pray. And he taketh him, taketh with him Peter, James, and John. And they begin to be sore and begin to be sore amazed and were very, and to be very heavy and saith unto him my soul unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death tarry ye here and watch and when he went forward a little he fell on the ground and prayed that if it be were possible the hour might pass from him and he said abba father all things are possible unto thee take away this cup from me nevertheless not what i will but thy wilt and he cometh and find them again, find them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest thou not couldest not thou watch one hour? You see what's going on here. The Lord said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Notice that they're to watch. And then when he fell down and prayed, and, and again, with the Lord being very heavy and sore amazed and, and and he said my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death tarry ye here and watch there, there's a lot going on there um take away this cup from me nevertheless not out not what i will but thou wilt it's the lord's will is what he was what he was talking about there but what i what i want to show here is that he explained to us the apostles about them watching and it was about them not uh falling into temptation, not following into the temptation of this world. The Lord himself, he was giving them an example. And this had, a lot of people don't even, they, they, they skim past this here. They, or they, they look upon it like, oh, he wanted them to pray. He wanted them to pray for him and all this. And, and they couldn't even get up and pray. And No, he wanted them to watch. And they were watching. It was the enemy. It was this world. It, it was it was the temptation as he as he said. Let's let's read on. Uh, Mark fourteen. Let's look at verse thirty eight. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit is truly ready, truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Dock at that in the back of your mind there. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Now what's that about? The spirit is truly ready. Their inner man is ready, but their flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. Notice, he's coming and saying the same thing to them. And when he says the same thing, he's going to tell them again, the spirit is ready, the flesh is weak. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wits they what to answer him. They didn't even know what to answer him there. 
And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And notice they were, they, they were, they were still laying down. But the idea here is he told them over and over again, he was educating the apostles that they watch and pray lest they enter into temptation. And the watching was the, them going to be watching, uh, it, 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 like as I said, it's the application, the same application that we get here, folks. Paul tells us the, the same thing. He, he gives you over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 about the temptation, about the uh, how Israel tempted were tempted. And let us not also tempt the, the Lord. And he's going to later tell them to watch. And we're going to cover all those verses there. But come over to um, come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And let's take a look at verse 13. Now this is the end, ending of the, uh, of, of the chapter, of, of the whole epistle. The ending of the epistle here. Let's just take a look at that. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men, be strong. Let all things, let all your things be done with charity. Notice, let all your things, everything be done with that brotherly love. That's that togetherness, that agape love there. But notice what he says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. What's the faith? The New Testament. That's the faith. Quit ye like, in other words, act ye like men. That's a godly man. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Now, isn't that there the bread and cup issue? Well, you ought to understand that it is. Stand fast in the faith. What's the faith? We just showed it. Charity, everything done in charity. The New Testament there as well as that bread concept. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Praying always with you. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That's in the word, the living word. In other words, all prayer is going to be done according to what God's word says, according to the will of God. That's how your, all, your, all your prayers ought to be. All your prayers ought to be concerning his will, not yours. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Notice it's going to be um, how it's going to be watching thereunto. Unto what? Thereunto the spirit. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's your in perseverance and supplication. That's their whole all their best interest in love supplying for for all the saints. Notice the bread and cup issue here. Praying always with uh, prayer and supplication in the spirit, the will of God, according to the will of God. Notice the bread and cup issue here. The bread is we are partakers of each other in love. Uh, look at verse 2, uh, Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer. Watch and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Notice you're continuing. But he knows these, these Colossians here are mature saints. And they're going to watch in the same. And even looking at the Ephesians there, Ephesians 6, watching there too. In other words, watch out. You're watching out in the same with Thanksgiving. You're taking heed unto yourself. You're watching you're just with Thanksgiving. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not the children. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. And notice here the watching there, you're told. That, that's the difference between being, because we're children of the light. We're not the children of, of, the, of darkness or the night. But you notice here, you're told to watch out, lest you sleep. Notice Paul says, therefore let us not sleep. Remember Israel? Remember the 12 apostles were asleep? He told them to wake up there. And you're told there. Let us not sleep. Let us watch. The, the, the Lord was telling the apostles the same 
issue there, folks. That they take heed, that they that they watch, and they, that they enter non into temptation. But th this is an application that we have to understand is a spiritual application only. This has nothing to do with a physical application, and this all concerns the bread and cup issue. Everything the Lord taught his apostles. All concerns the Lord's table. Notice when Paul tells us, he says, in the night the Lord was betrayed, took bread. Let's look at another issue, and we're going to get ready to close pretty soon. Let's look at, come over to Acts chapter 20, and we're just going to introduce this, and we'll pick this back up next week. Acts chapter 20, and let's take a look at verse uh, 22. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now notice Paul's going on to Jerusalem there. Paul has a cup himself. Paul knows what he has to do. Paul has this ministry like he says and the ministry which i have received of the lord jesus that is the new testament that paul talks about the, the uh, paul's cup itself and we ourselves ought, ought to understand that that uh we ourselves have a, a cup and paul calls us able calls himself able ministers of the new testament and we ourselves can be able ministers of the new testament is about drinking worthily and eating bread of the Lord worthily as well. Let's take a look at one more verse. And again, uh, one more section of verses. And we're going to um, uh, end, end it here. But next week, we're going to look at the, the next two uh, verses there. Um, uh, but, but let's take a look at this. Acts 20, verse 25. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching unto Preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. And Paul knows this, that that's the attacks against him, the hatred against Paul. Wherefore I take, take to you record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul is declaring the, the New Testament unto them. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto the flock and over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseas to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with my own with his own blood. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Notice he's telling them to take heed, because they're going to be tempted, they're going to be temptations, they're going to be some of his, their own selves. There are going to be divisions among them. There's going to be uh, uh, um, enemies among them. For uh, because of the way this world teaches but we're gonna we're gonna be looking at this uh next week uh we're gonna be um uh taking a look at more of that next week there and um just want to introduce the uh the whole issue of the watching the temptation the aspect of of the hatred of this world for the doctrine for the lord's table for the new testament that we are to partake of we all have a cup that we're to drink worthily onto um and we in that cup is the New Testament in the Lord's blood there, and and the, and the ourselves being one bread, we are one body. We are to partake of each other in love, and as Paul tells us, in 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 honor, in brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. Uh, he even tells us. But uh, I'm going to end it here. But then next next time we're going to be we're gonna take a look at part three of the 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 Lord's table aspect there and how to remember the lord's death till he come but until next time thank you